What's up guys, in this video I want to talk a bit about playing video games to get 3D inspiration. Now this isn't going to be some corny video where I just point out the obvious. I uh, really want to show you some techniques that I use to 1. get inspiration and 2. actually study. Now the game I'm playing here is Star Citizen. A lot of you have probably heard of the game, it's been in development for like 14 years or something. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, in my opinion, it is far from playable, but I'm not playing this game to play the game. I'm playing this for inspiration, that's just how I tend to work, I don't play a lot of video games. So um, I actually wanted to point out a few things and a few ideas you could use to build your visual library and also get design ideas. So uh, when I play games, I always tend to just study the environment and study different objects. It just tends to... Uh, to help me visually and also seems to make me a more proficient artist in my opinion. And there's some things I want to point out that you can do in pretty much any video game you play. It doesn't have to be this game, it can be literally any game of any genre. So literally what I want you to do is go up to any model that interests you in the game and just look at it, study it, take screenshots, see exactly how the pieces are put together, take a look at some of the errors, take a look at some of the more uh, obvious spots, take a look at everything and just build up that visual library. One of the things I find the most fascinating in games is that there's actually a lot of errors that you might not notice. And the reason these errors stay is because it just doesn't make sense to make everything perfect when you're on time crunches. One thing I thought was pretty interesting, if I go up to this little uh, mechanical piece here, if we go in to this little boolean, see that boolean right there? If we zoom in really, really close on this, you can actually see a lot of visual issues in this boolean. One, uh, the most obvious of which is there's a lot of weird shading warping and just um, bad shading in general. If we just kind of look around on it, you know, you can kind of view this almost as a matte cap. See, we have some very visual uh, shading issues around here. Now, I am not saying this to knock whoever made this. This is one of the most impressive models I, I've seen. This is amazing. But it just goes to show that not everything has to be perfect. And oftentimes, it doesn't make sense to make everything perfect in your scenes because you're going to waste way more time rather than actually building what you want to build. And this is also a pretty cool point because if we zoom in again, let me go back over here, this can actually be masked as perhaps some sort of metal indentation, maybe something hit it. It's a metal piece, it's mechanical, right? So a lot of times you can have like weird shading warps and boolean issues and kind of mask it off as just a, a visual effect really. And I'm not saying to basically destroy your models and make them look awful and then just throw it off as, oh, it's a, it's a piece of metal. No, what I'm saying is oftentimes when you're building a big complex piece, and you simply have to prioritize your time, put the issues in the areas where it makes the most sense. Another thing I notice with these types of pieces is that they're using, if you watched my last video, they're actually using one segment bevels with face weighted normals. If we zoom in here, you're gonna see, see those edges right there? This is a single segment bevel, uh, most likely with weighted normals applied to it. I'm actually gonna hop into Blender and show you real quick exactly how this effect was made. So check this out, I'm here in Blender, what I'm going to do is make a similar piece to that foot. It was basically a scaled cube and what we had was like, I don't know, some sort of extrusion kind of going up, right? We'll just go into the side view, kind of extrude this up, and then extrude it up again. Something along these lines, right? Now what was happening here is we, um, we had some sort of cut in here, so we'll just kind of cut that in, pull it through. Right, maybe we'll give it like a, um, you know what, it's fine how it is. We'll do another one over here. This is a very rough draft of how that piece looked, but what I want to show you is, watch this. If we run a bevel like we always want to do, you're going to see the more we scroll up, the cleaner it looks, and I also have hard and normals turned on. But if you watched my last video, single segment bevels are probably the best way to go for performance and quality. So if we go really far down, take a look at this. This looks almost identical to the effect that we saw on that model in Star Citizen. 
See this? This is literally a bevel modifier with one segment and with our hardened normals turned on. And if we hop back over to Star Citizen here, this is quite literally the same effect we can see on this piece. So when I say to study the environment and study the models and the games you play, this is precisely what I mean. See how bevels are being ran, see how bullions are being run, uh, see how the corners are reflecting light, see how chamfers and different design elements like that are being used because these are all so incredibly important if you want to have nice detail. I can literally sit in this game for hours, not playing the game at all, and just collect a huge visual library, and as a matter of fact, that's exactly what I did the other day. I walked around Star Citizen for a few hours, just taking in, uh, just absorbing, uh, absorbing everything, right? Like if you go on a vacation, you want to take in the environment, take pictures, and just live in the moment. That's what I do when I play these types of games, because I tell you what, I got off Star Citizen, I went to Blender, and just modeled for like two hours straight, and I think I came up with one of the best and most efficient sci-fi pieces I've ever made just after a sitting of playing Star Citizen. No real studying, just kind of observing, right? So this is what I mean when I say, you know, you can sit and model things, but a lot of people tell me they have issues coming up with uh, creative ideas and building that creative IQ. What you need to stop doing is going to Google, typing in the name of a piece you want to model, then just looking at it and copying it. That doesn't do anything. You think these models over here were just, you know, they went to Google Images and just copy and pasted and modeled this from a reference? No. Uh, the people that make these things most likely have an incredibly diverse visual library and come up with these based off of their imagination. What you need to do to get good at 3D is build up your imagination and create the ability to picture things in your head and execute on them. That is the best way to become a good 3D artist because anyone can model, but not everyone can use that modeling experience and create something new. And even I sometimes, you know, have trouble with that. Sometimes I'll sit and I just won't feel creative for the day. So what I'll do is hop on a game like this and just study. Like, look at these corners. You can see how these bevels are ran. We most likely probably have some decals or trim sheets applied. I don't know specifically the workflow of every person designing this game, but you get the point. You can also go on here and kind of study how bevels are being ran and chamfers are being used. You can see the bevels are pretty tiny and reflect on a lot of light on it, really. And uh, overall, these pieces aren't anything super complex. And look over here. Still, we have some more shading issues on this piece. See that? All the way around. Just goes to show that even the most advanced games aren't perfect. One thing I also see a lot of people do is get demotivated when they see super complex designs like this. I would probably bet money that most of the people working on really complex models like this and on games as big as Star Citizen probably have more experience in the industry and in modeling than I've been alive. So it's not like that comes overnight. Some of these models I am probably still not proficient enough to make myself and I've been using Blender for eight years and I model almost every single day. So I don't want you to get on these games and get demotivated. What I want you to do is go over to models, some that are more complex. I want you to study the form and different shapes and how the bevels and booleans work with each other. And for something that you want to perhaps have a little bit more inspiration for, like um, I'm going to find a better example. Here we are, something that's a little bit more basic. For something like this that's relatively simple and is mainly made of, you know, shapes that you could actually work with based on your skill level, what I want you to do is go over to these and just study them, look at them, uh, see how they work, and realize that you don't need to hop in Blender and know how to make that spaceship over there. What you need to do is go find models that you think are cool and that you could model Look at the different forms, look at the design elements, see how bevels are ran. I know I'm kind of repeating myself at this point. But really, this is all the stuff I've been teaching on this channel. Look at that, we have a decal right here. Most likely a decal, perhaps it's unwrapped over a, uh, an atlas map, I don't know. You know, we have bevels ran all around these edges, textures going over it. We have some more decals over here, or perhaps that's a baked normal map. All the different design elements I've been discussing in my videos, you can literally find in any sort of video game you play. And this is how you get good at 3D. Obviously, not the only way, but one of the best ways I find that helps me become a better artist, even eight years in. 
So next time you're thinking about going to Google and typing in coffee machine, uh, think twice about it. If you're a beginner and just want to learn how to model, I am all for that. That's exactly what I did when I was learning hard ops and box cutter. I was modeling um, real world shapes, coffee machines, you know, basic hard surface shapes to learn the tools. But learning the tools is only the beginning. Once you've learned the tools, what you need to do is build your creative IQ and imagination to make cool stuff. I get this question a ton. A lot of people say, I can model, but how exactly do you come up with these cool ideas? And this is exactly uh, one of the ways that I tend to do it. And the last and most important thing I can tell you is invest in yourself. I have spent a lot of money just on improving my 3D skill set. And I'm not saying you have to do that, but if you come across something cool with a price tag behind it that you think would benefit you heavily, uh, instead of just throwing it out the window and not considering it, maybe you know put it on the back burner, save up a few bucks, and then buy whatever you think is going to benefit you in your uh, 3D career, whether that's a course, whether that's a software, uh, whether that is a tool to help you get the job done. You have to invest in yourself. I bought this game for 40 bucks, not to, I think it was 40, something like that. Not to play it, but literally to walk around the environment and stare at floors. I'm not kidding you. And guess what? I have already felt after just a few weeks of owning this game, uh, you know, twice, triple as, as good of a 3D modeler as I was before. I feel so much more um, inspired in 3D and also more proficient in 3D just by playing video games and this is probably one of the most fun ways you can actually get better at 3D. I personally am not a big fan of video games. I get bored of them quite easily. I think the most recent game I played was the Call of Duty campaign and before that was the last Call of Duty campaign so I went like a year without playing games basically, maybe here and there. But um, you know, a lot of people love playing video games and you can learn a lot just by playing them and I think it's probably one of the most fun ways to do it. You don't have to play Star Citizen necessarily, but you know, there's a lot of games out there depending on the style you're going for. Maybe you like post-apocalyptic art, well you could maybe get a game like, um, I don't know, The Last of Us, or perhaps you like more war type environments, you can go study Call of Duty campaigns. And there's also all, a ton of different games that I would recommend. Uh, Mirror's Edge is a fantastic game for futuristic and sci-fi inspiration, especially Hard Surface, Alien Isolation, there's so many different games you can use to build your visual library. So this was just a quick video just to have a chat and kind of uh, assess some of the questions that a lot of people send me. A lot of people get really demotivated and I, I can relate to it because I was that way too. The best way to get better at 3D is to build your imagination. Some people are built with a super creative mind, some people have to build it like me. I know everyone can do it as long as you're competent enough to use a computer and learn 3D. I think you're competent enough to go and study environments and build your imagination because that is the truest form of getting better at 3D and making cool unique objects for your portfolio. And the last thing I want to say to you is never stop studying. There are a lot of people I look up to, you know, some of the obvious ones like Vitaly Bulgarov, um, Aiden Grazio has really good arts. There's a ton of people that I look up to, even though I consider myself pretty proficient at what I do. There's always going to be someone better than you. There's always going to be someone worse than you. I don't really care either way where I stand. What I care about is building uh, myself up. I don't care where someone else is because it doesn't affect me. So what I do is I study and get to where I want to be personally, which is different for everyone. So when someone comes up to me and says, oh, I should go and be able to build, you know, some complex shit that I don't care about, I'm gonna say, you know, I, I don't care. That's not, that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in what I'm interested in. So stop telling me what to focus on. So that's about uh, the only tips I really have for you. A lot of people have asked this question. Focus on yourself, focus on building your imagination, and never stop studying. So thanks for watching guys, and I will see you on Friday.